So have you ever found yourself after a weekend activity in which you consumed gratuitous amounts of alcohol or meats sitting on the couch, diving deeply into a rabbit hole of YouTube videos? Because that's exactly what I found myself doing last weekend. And in that I found this really cool video from this Slovenian woodworker where he had this like cave floating table thingamajiggy. And I looked at it and I said, I must build this. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna make a coffee table using these dimensions while I do this upside down, it kinda looks like this. I want it to look like a cave on all four sides and I want it to have like a floating aspect to it. So this dude, instead of using tens tensegrity, tension, tension, which we used in a couple videos, used acrylic. So there'll be an acrylic sheet kind of in here and we'll be having this, I'll carve this floating stuff and essentially, make it look as close to a cave as I possibly can. In order to do so though, we're gonna have to make a cutting board style, which means we're gonna need to get the cutting some strips and gluing those and then cutting those up and then re-gluing those. Let's make a three foot by three foot cutting board. Woo! Oh yeah, we need two of them. Let's get to it. So I've got a bunch of chunks of slabs. Uh, that are just laying around. We're gonna mill these up, make a bunch of squares, and glue those up. We're just gonna start there. Sam, summon my beam saw. Actually, I could probably just use a bandsaw. So we've got a literal butt ton of strips cut from all of those slab chunks we got there. Um, what we're gonna do now is essentially make two 34 inch cutting boards that are end grain. So we've got a bunch of glue ups to do here and then we've got a bunch of re-cutting and sawing to do. <clears throat> Only way to get these through my planer is to cut them, uh, is to make them in, in 18 inch parts because I only have a 20 inch wide planer. So we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to the boob sweat. Yep, let's go. <laughs> so in all of my brilliance on the last panel, I just ruined the perfect glue up by gluing the wrong side of the board. Don't smoke crack, kids. I wasn't smoking crack. I just made a mistake. But still, don't smoke crack. Yes, that was a brand new bottle of glue. Got these boards out of glue up. They're all planed up and squared. Now we need to make a gigundas cutting boards, which means 10,000 cross cuts, Seagans in 45 minutes. We're gonna glue this up in four parts. Uh, we're going through randomizing so they look good because they came out of like four different sections. And then we'll glue those sections together. We'll just keep squaring stuff as we go. Now cue ridiculous glue up montage too. Glue up one is dried overnight now. Time for a little drum sandage. And the second part of the glue up. Come on. So these boards bowed slightly from the clamping pressure of yesterday's glue up. Only reason I can joint these on the edge grain side, whatever this is, that's not long grain, is because I'm taking in like a 30 second off and it's because I have a helical head jointer. I don't think this works as well with a, with a straight blade. If, if you think different, let me know down in the comments. 
but I'm pretty sure you get crazy tear out. That'll do, pig. That will do. All right, let's get some clamps on these mother suckers. All right, Yens, the massive cutting board looking top thing is out of clamps. Because of all the clamping pressure and because there's so many little blocks, it's out of square. So we're gonna square this thing up and then we're gonna go start getting to the, uh, like the organic shaping aspect thing concept that's in my brain. Yeah, I don't really know how or the way this is gonna work, but we need to get this as flat and as finished as possible. That way I don't have to try and sand it upside down or do anything squirrely, even though we love squirrely. So let's go. So we've got some temporary legs here. We're gonna grab that top. Okay, I basically have no clue what I'm doing, but I'm making this up as I go. So my thought is maybe I can glue this up. Like, like I don't know. Ah! So we just had to go outside some dudes buying the neighbor's dumpster. That's what happens here. And he, uh, and he recognized me from my days as a, as a stealer. And Sam was actually baffled. He's like, he's like, wow. He's like, I just really don't understand how some, how you were a backup that basically just practiced for the Steelers. Yes, I know, Sam's very nice. And this dude on the street recognized you from that. He's like, either you lied to me about something, which I didn't, or Yinzers inherently just know the entire roster of people on the Steelers. Fact. <laughs> it literally exploded everywhere but the joint. <laughs> okay, so to keep all these parts kind of uh, together, because I, it'll just explode if I try to put a clamp on it. And uh, so what we're gonna try to do here is, let's call it a little bit of a CA glue trick. So what I can do is spread around some regular wood glue and then take a dab of CA Take the next piece and then use the CA glue as a clamp. And that'll hold it until, I'll, and I'll just keep building it out, and then I'll get it in clamps, and it should be decent. So my chunks are dry, which means it's glue time. We're gonna glue these to the top because they have the same end graining. And I'm gonna throw a variable in for the bottom part. But I'm liking how this is coming along. I'm gonna clean these up a little bit and then we'll get to the awesome. Time to take out of mold and talk like a man. It's not even a mold. God, I've been doing too much epoxy. This thing is out of clamps, and now we're gonna get to the fun part where I make it look like stalagmites and stalactites, which is gonna kind of involve shaping a little bit of cutting and carving there, and a little bit more skill than what's been involved so far in this build. And speaking of skill, I'm gonna thank this week's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for all things creative. I love dominating my life, as you guys know, my woodworking and my business. And one thing I use Skillshare for all the time is the business side of things. I personally am right now taking Thomas Frank's Productivity Masterclass, which is absolutely awesome, helping me manage all of the things that are going on from my day-to-day -day personal life and in the business, which is great. And I'm absolutely loving it. There's tons of options out there for everything from interior design to photography, videography, visual effects, you name it, it's there and you can learn, and it's awesome. And because Skillshare is so awesome, they're giving away 
two free months for the first thousand people that click the link down in the description for their uh, premium class, which is phenomenal. I love it. That's what I'm taking right now. So if you want to try it out, there's a link down in the description. Go ahead, smash that link, get signed up, start doing something, better your life, better your business, better everything. That's what we do here. We're just trying to get better. And I appreciate you Skillshare for sponsoring this build and helping my viewers get better. Now let's go make this project look better. Get in there, get in there, get in there. Hey, starting to look like a cave. I'm not gonna lie. Way cooler than I was anticipating. See, isn't it cool? Isn't it cool? The next thing that's gonna go into it, I'm gonna bust out my uh, power carving tools and then give this some That's the definition. Let's do it. So this thing's looking sweet. If you remember what movie that was from, leave a comment down below. Cause I don't even remember, CTE. But anyway, I'm literally loving how this thing's looking. It is way better than what I had pictured in my head. Um, the shaping's pretty good. I, I took some chunks out and stuff. I think I can soften it with the sander. I was gonna use the, um, the other carving heads. I cut the, I don't even know where I put it. Oh, there it is. I used the Arbor Tech uh, turbo plane on this because it's wood. The last couple carving projects were with resin, so I was using the cuts all disc, which is a little more of a, it's like a grinding pad. So it took off a lot more material, and I think I can just soften it with a sander. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just gonna start sanding, and then kind of like keep looking at it, keep moving. Yeah, and then we gotta figure out how to make it clear. So, got this thing sanded down to 100 grit. And it is looking fantastic. I mean, I gotta say, it is way better than I was anticipating. It's weird how that happens. There's a couple voids and defects in the top here, so we've gotta do a little bit of epoxy filling, um, cause some of the wood was just garbage and it had uh, some cracks and holes and knots and stuff. So I'm gonna fill those up. Um, and then we're gonna get the supports, the actual supports for the table um, mocked in, finish sanding, spray it. And I'm gonna show you guys how this thing looks. Now I just stand here like an idiot and wait for epoxy to dry. Damn it, terrible timing. Ugh, I am not the brightest. Now it's the moment that all of you have been waiting for, the moment where you go and buy this t-shirt. And then we finish this table. Let us spray. So to make this thing look floating, we have acrylic sheets. I bought these on McMaster car for the ridiculous price of $500. Yeah. You guys think the shit I do here is cheap. That's why all them ads are in these videos. Ha <laughs> ha! But to make it crystal clear, we're gonna flame polish it, which means I gotta sand it, then burn it. Let's go. And now for the most satisfying part. Can I do it in one peel? Come on, come on, be the one. Be the one, be the one. Who is it? Now, let's mount her.
So thank you guys for checking out this build. I literally think this could be the coolest thing I've ever made, ever, period. If you agree, let me know down in the comments below. And if you don't agree, then go watch this video because I think this is the coolest project I've done besides this one. See you there.